Hello students, a very, very good evening to all of you. Welcome to my channel. This is a very important class on postmodern writers and today we will talk about Ian Macworth. But before starting, I want to give you a brief introduction about myself. My name is Rishti Mukherjee. I have qualified NDUGC NET exam in English literature four times and have also qualified West Bengal SET examination. I have two years of teaching experience. Moreover, I have also talked in NPTEL online course from IIT Madras three times. So that is all about myself. This is the link of my Telegram channel. So those of you who have not joined yet, please join to get notification of all important classes. And also please don't forget to like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel so that many more new learners can join. Good evening, Cherry. Good evening, Nazreen. Welcome. And these are the timings of the classes, Monday to Friday at 8.30 p.m., Saturday, Sunday off. So don't forget to join me live. Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notifications. Okay, so today we are starting a new series on postmodern writers. So the first topic, uh, the first novelist which we are going to discuss, that is Ian Macworth. So, Ian Macwan, uh, he is currently alive, 1948 to present is his timeline. This is the image of Ian Macwan, you can see. And as usual, we will first discuss his biographical details and then we will move on to his novels. So, in, the, in my class on literary theory and criticism, I have already explained about postmodernism. So, those of you who have not watched this video, please watch that video on postmodernism. Okay, so let's discuss with, uh, let's discuss Ian Macburn directly. Good evening, Raj Kishore, welcome. So those of you who are watching this video, please like and share so that many more new students can join. Now, full name is Ian Russell Macburn. His full name is Ian Russell Macburn. He was born on 21st June, 1948 in Hampshire. England. He spent his childhood in Singapore and East Asia, so associated with our Indian India or Indian culture. Okay, so he spent his childhood in Singapore and East Asia and later he came to England when he was 12. So he was born in Hampshire, later he spent his childhood in India in Singapore and then he came to, then he went to England when he was 12. He studied at University of East Anglia. West Bengal set ka result. No Raj Kishore, abhi tak to nahi aaye hai. Came to England when he was 12. Studied at University of East Anglia. He was a novelist and also a screenwriter. Basically he was famous as a novelist but he was also a screenwriter. Screenplay writer. And this is very important. He began his literary career writing gothic short stories. So he was also a short story writer. He started his career as a short story writer. And he was greatly atheist, spoke against Islamism and Christianity. So he is a very rebellious, uh, rebellious man. And also he protests against all sorts of traditional religion or uh, you may say institutionalized religion. Okay, so he was greatly atheist like uh, P.B. Shelley. He was nominated for Man Booker Prize six times and for Man Booker International Prize twice. So these two prizes are different. Man Booker Prize, which means Booker Prize, he was nominated for six times and for Man Booker International Prize twice, two times. Okay, so remember that his first work, his first work is actually a short story collection titled as First Love, Last Rites, published in 1975. So remember that it was his first short story collection which won Somerset Mom Award, another prestigious award in the field of literature and fiction mainly. So he wrote this work, First Love, Last Rites, a, a short story collection which won Somerset Mom Award, published in 1975. Okay. 
Now his play solid geometry was banned for obscenity. He was also a playwright, not written so much, uh, not wrote so many plays, but yes, uh, some of the plays are important. So his play solid geometry it was banned for obscenity. So these are minute details which you need to remember. And he was also a radical person because he expressed frankly expressed his opinion on women and homosexuality, and he also protested against institutionalized religion. That is why his character uh, is very controversial in terms of um, attitude, you may say. Actually, uh, he develops a kind of rebellious attitude for all sorts of traditional things, okay? And he frankly uh, discusses about frankly discusses about women and homosexuality very prominently, okay? So, uh, that, that is about his biographical details. Now, we move on to his works. So the uh, all um, all the novels written by Ian Mac one they have very peculiar and complex plot, and that is why very interesting. And I have already discussed in my class on postmodernism that postmodern literature is characterized by obviously absurdity, uske saath parody, pastiche, uh, metafiction, parody, pastiche, metafiction. All these things are associated with postmodern literature. So all these elements you can find in Ian Mac one's novel. So the first novel is Cement Garden, published in 1978. That is the first novel. Now, the Cement Garden, it was also ad uh, adapted into a film of the same name. The film adaptation bhi hua tha inka. Now, it is actually the story of four orphans, Jack, Sue, Tom and Julie. Very familiar names in English literature. Right? So, it is the story of four orphans. Now, when their mother died, they try to hide the news by hiding her dead body in a cement cellar. Okay? So, kind of, uh, you may say, it appears very similar to the story of M.E.D. or how to get rid of it, that particular play. M.E.D. or how to get rid of it. So, very similar to that story. M.E.D. or how to get rid of it. This play talks about uh, a particular dead body which is hidden and that dead body is growing continuously and finally it creates uh, a lot of problem for the for the uh, inhabitants of that particular house. So, here we almost similar plot. Hai. Okay, so four orphans, they are very much obsessed with their mother and when their mother die, they try to hide the news. Now, why they are trying to hide the news? Because if that news is uh, spread that uh, they are now completely orphan, so they must be sent to orphanage or they must be sent to foster parents. Foster parents. So they are not at all interested to go to the house of foster parents. They try to hide the news by hiding her dead body in a cement cellar. So this type of news bhi kabhi -kabhi aate hai. newspaper, mein, TV channels. Mein. Some psychologically disturbed people, uh, they, are, they are so much obsessed with that particular person that they do not want to let uh, his or her body away. Okay, good evening, Shushmita. Welcome. So, uh, when their mother died, they tried to hide the news by hiding her dead body in a cement cellar. Now, Jack is the narrator of the story, one of the orphans. Jack and Julie act as parents for their brothers and sisters. So, Jack is the elder brother and Julie is the eldest sister. So, they act as parents, as guardians for their brothers and sisters. Now, Julie falls in love with Derek and brings him into their house. Now, Derek finally senses that something is wrong inside that house. Derek gets a rotten smell from the cellar. And uh, he says that something is hidden or something is rotten inside that particular cellar. But the children tell him that it is the smell coming from a dead dog from outside. This cellar ke paas se ye smell nahi aare, ye outside smell hai. Uh, the smell of a rotten dog or a dead dog. Now, finally, Derek comes to know the truth and helps to reseal the cellar. Finally, usko pata chalta hai ki how much uh, they are obsessed with their mother and why they are trying to hide her corpse. So, finally, when Derek comes to know the truth, he helps to reseal the cellar. 
okay finally jack and julie get intimate so it it contains some disturbing relationship between a brother and sister jack and julie get intimate and during their intimacy sue informs them that derek is smashing the concrete coffin derek is trying to destroy the coffin now why he is trying to do so that is very unclear at first he is trying to reseal the cellar he is trying to uh, help the people or help the orphans to hide that news but finally derek is trying to smash the concrete coffin and when police comes the three begin to talk among themselves about the dead corpse and about the memories of their mother so that is about cement garden good evening neha welcome that is the first important novel by iron mac one so very uh, peculiar and surprising plot right but yes it's very beautiful novel okay so cement garden that is the first novel we have discussed moving on to next work that is the comfort of strangers is it is another interesting novel comfort of strangers published in 1981 okay next important novel so com uh, com comfort of strangers it is set in an unnamed city uh, probably it is venice probably it is not clearly mentioned the city is anonymous but according to the critics it refers to venice theek hai to isme kaun main character hai an unmarried couple very interesting unmarried couple mary and colin they are the main characters now mary is an actor ex actor actually mary is an ex actor and a divorced mother of two children okay so both mary and colin have disturbing relationship and they are actually unmarried couple they are living together without marrying each other now uh, they fall in love very passionately but now their warmth of love is dying gradually gradually mary feels isolated from colin and also vice versa okay so their warmth of love is dying and they spend holiday together the whole novel is actually set during that particular period of holiday when uh, when they are spending holiday together now during that holiday they meet another character called robert okay they meet another character robert later what happens robert invites them to a gay bar rather forcefully gay bar a place for homosexual people so robert invites them to uh, invites them to a gay bar rather forcefully and finally robert uh, discusses with them or uh, shares his own story with them and he tells them how he was abused by his sadistic father okay so robert also had a traumatic past he was greatly abused by his sadistic father and he shared the news uh, with uh, or he uh, shared his experiences with these two people mary meets with uh, mary meets with robert's wife caroline okay later mary meets with uh, robert's wife caroline and now robert is trying to uh, make a plot robert uh, separates colin from caroline and takes him to his wine bar okay so robert is now plotting robert is separating colin from caroline because uh, he thinks that colin and caroline may develop some kind of another relationship so robert separates colin from caroline and takes him to his wine shop he means colin uh, good evening rishi welcome takes him to his wine shop caroline is also sexually tortured by robert and she breaks his neck okay so uh, this is very interesting uh, thing the relationship between caroline uh, and robert okay so both of them are uh, psychologically disturbed in that uh, psychologically uh, you may say that psychologically distorted because uh, both of them are masochist and sadist and they have a mutual fantasy to torture or kill each other during intimacy so they love violence ओके तो एक पिक्यूलियर रिलेशनशिप है दे हैव अ फैंटसी ठीक है तो दे हैव अ फैंटसी टू टॉर्चर और किल इच अदर ड्यूरिंग इंटीमेसी एंड कैरोलाइन आल्सो डिफाइन्स हरसेल्फ एज मैसोकिस्ट नाउ मेरी वाचेस रॉबर्ट स्लिट्स कॉलिन्स रिस्ट विद अ रेजर ब्लेड एंड फाइनली कॉलिन इज डेड सो फाइनली ड्यूरिंग देयर प्राइवेट रिलेशनशिप मेरी सॉरी बट रॉबर्ट किल्स कॉलिन okay during that particular relationship robert slits colin's wrist with a razor blade and finally colin is dead but when police is uh, informed about that police is very normal 
because police knows that this kind of incidents are happening regularly in that particular place so the police has no particular impact or uh, sympathy for those characters or maybe uh, he he is not thinking something uh, abnormality uh, thinking about something abnormality in this situation so police is completely normal about this so that is about the novel the comfort of strangers bahut hi matlab uh, different kinds of plots hai. right because they those are all post modern novel okay moving on to next novel the child in time published in 1987 the child in time now this particular novel is talking about an author stephen lewis is the name of the author who is the author of children's books okay now during his visit to supermarket he loses his only daughter kate uh, stephen's only daughter kate now after that uh, he is also very much uh, anxious to find out his daughter at the same time he is terribly dissatisfied with his job at government committee on child care so very ironically he works in the uh, committee of child care but finally uh, he can't take care of her, of his own child he has lost his daughter kate okay his wife julie is frustrated by her husband's quest to find their daughter that creates a problem in their relationship that julie is frustrated julie is not happy um, about the process of stephen searching of their daughter a uh, good evening elon welcome now next kya hota hai thelma another character thelma believes that julia's marriage is disastrous Thelma considers that Julia is unhappily married to this man. Okay. Now Stephen sees his parents as a young couple before marriage in a pub. Now that is a fantasy, a vision of Stephen. ठीक है? तो ये एक बहुत ही interesting चीज़ है कि Stephen अपने vision में maybe it is his hallucination or something else या फिर वो कोई flashback में कोई story बता रहा है, ठीक है? As it's a postmodern novel, तो structure obviously complex है. You can all understand. So Stephen uh, now visualizes his parents as a young couple before marriage in a pub, which is literally not possible, right? So we can imagine that he is uh, narrating the story in flashback, or maybe he is uh, seeing some kind of vision of past. Okay. Now during that vision or during that hallucination, जो भी आप कहते हो, तो Stephen ये देखता है his parents as a young couple before marriage meeting in a pub. Now Charles Dark, Stephen's close friend, commits suicide. Another tragedy happens. His close friend Charles Dark commits suicide, and the book ends with Julie's delivering of a baby. Already Julie uh, has uh, delivered. a child a daughter next julie is delivering a baby now this is very confusing that whether this baby is actually kate or the second baby ye bahut confusing hai theek hai to matlab isme ek ek complex mixture hai flashback flash forward story ka past and present as a stream of consciousness novel mein hota hai and it is narrated in such a way that it becomes very difficult to think whether it is actually a flashback or it is just a vision or an imaginary dream of stephen okay so that is about this novel the child of uh, sorry the child in time published in 1987 Okay, moving on to next novel. Hmm. Moving on to next novel that is, uh, yes, The Innocent, published in nineteen ninety. The Innocent. Now this novel is set in Berlin at the beginning of Cold War. Cold War you have all read in your history books. So it is set during Cold War, historical novel, war novel. तो मेन कॉन्टेक्स्ट क्या है इसका भी बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग प्लॉट है ड्यूरिंग दैट कोल्ड वॉर द अमेरिकन वॉन्ट टू इंस्टॉल मॉनिटरिंग इक्विपमेंट इन अ टनल टू टैप द फुल लाइन ऑफ रशियन आर्मी तो एक वॉर कॉन्टेक्स्ट में सेट है कि अमेरिकन सोल्जर दे कोशिश कर रहे हैं रशियन फोन लाइन को टैप करने के लिए तो वो एक ऐसा मेकेनिज्म बिल्ड करना चाहते हैं टनल के अंदर ताकि उससे वो फोन लाइन टैप हो सके तो एक specific uh, equipment is needed uh, is needed to be installed in that particular tunnel now ye kaam kiske upar diya jata hai jo ki isme innocent hai so the innocent jisko hum kehte hain uska naam hai leonard marnham 
Leonard Marnham is the main character who is referred to as the innocent. Now, he is actually a post office engineer. He is employed in this job by the Americans. So, unko ye duty, unko ye uh, responsibility diya jate hai ki wo is kaam ko finish kar. Ye equipment ko wo install kar. Now, there are distrust between British and Americans. Uh, distrust is created between British and Americans. Why? Because British people are angry as the Americans do not inform them about this mission. So, Britain ko ye pasan nahi tha. Now, Britain is trying to uh, make that project uh, a grand flop. Theek hai. So, Britain usko destroy karne ki koshish kar lehe. Now, a scientist, McNamee, British scientist, he wants Leonards to act as a spy for them. So he is trying to bribe Leonard so that Leonard uh, us project ko leave karke wo iske spy ki tarah kaam kare. Matlab Britain ke spy ki tarah wo kaam kare. Leonard lives in an apartment. Very ironically, Leonard is trying to build a particular equipment to tap the whole lines of Russian army. And he is living in a particular apartment which is owned by a Soviet Russian agent, George Black. So, this is an ironic thing. So, Leonard lives in an apartment owned by a Soviet agent, George Black. Later, what happens? Leonard meets Maria in the bar. Leonard meets Maria at a bar. Maria, another character. Maria's ex-husband Otto starts a violent fight with Maria. Okay? Now to save her from her husband, Leonard is greatly injured. And finally, Maria kills Otto. Okay? Maria kills Otto. Now his body is cut. This is very violent thing. Uh, Maria ne kya kiya? His, his means Otto. Otto's body is cut and given to Leonard to hide anywhere inside the tunnel. Okay? So uske body ko cut karge, tukde tukde karke Leonard ko de diya liya, taki wo tunnel ke kisi bhi depth mein usko khek de. Okay? But after 32 years, Leonard unites with Maria surprisingly in America. During a surprise visit, Leonard meets with America. Uh, sorry, Leonard meets with Maria in America. So, this is about this particular novel, The Innocent. And basically, novel ka do part mein setting hai. One is talking about during the time of Cold War, and the next part is talking about after 32 years, what happens to Leonard and Maria. Okay. Sure. Moving on to next novel, which is the most famous novel of uh, Iron Mac 1, that is Amsterdam. Amsterdam, published in 1990, the most famous novel of Iron Mac 1. So, Amsterdam ka kya plot hai? It won Booker Prize in 1998. So remember that he was nominated for Man Booker Prize six times and he won Booker for this novel. Nomination or winning, do no alag cheez hai. So, he nominated with her six times, but he won Booker for this particular novel, Amsterdam, in 1998. Now, the novel very interestingly opens with the death of the main character, that is Molly Lane. Okay, so this type of question is asked, which novel of Iron Mac 1 opens with a funeral ceremony? So, that is uh, Amsterdam. Now, during, uh, in the funeral ceremony of Molly Lane, her former lovers joined. A good evening, Sonam. Welcome. Her former lover joins. Uh, former lovers join. Now she uh, had relationship with four men. One is Julian Jarmoni, the foreign secretary. Another is Vernon Halliday, the editor. Clive Linley, the composer, music composer, and George. Finally, George, her husband. So she has four men in her life, and everyone attend her funeral. Now, during that funeral, Clive, who is the music composer, Clive Lindley, Clive is horrified to think how Molly felt pain before dying. Clive is very much horrified to think so. He requests Vernon to euthanize him if he is ever diagnosed with the same illness. So, euthanize, ab jante ho, euthanasia, it is a particular treatment for uh, diseases, uh, jisme kya hota hai, jisme uh, legally, मतलब पेशेंट को कंसेंट लेकर उसको एक ऐसा ट्रीटमेंट दिया जाते हैं ताकि उनका डेथ पीसफुली हो पाए सो दैट इज एक्चुअली द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ यूथेनसिया सो ही रिक्वेस्ट्स वर्नन टू यूथेनाइज हिम इफ ही इज एवर डायग्नोस्ड विद द सेम इलनेस ही इज हॉरिफाइड दैट हाउ मॉली फेल्ट पेन बिफोर डाइंग 
Now, after the death of Molly, George discovered some photos which proved the affair between Julian and Molly. This is quite clear to George. He wants to take revenge on Julian now. He means John. Later, what happens? He decides to publish those photos in Vernon's paper, The Judge, as a, a step to take revenge. But Clive is against that publisher. Julian's photo as a female will expose his hypocrisy, Vernon says. So, there is a conflict between conflict chal raha hai. Uh, George is trying to the photos with his wife and Julian, ka, matlab, uh, uske wife ke Julian ka, wo publicly uh, publish so that people know that how Julian is a hypocrite person. So, Julian's photo as a female, but Julian is dressed as a female, so a cross-dressing image is coming So, that cross-dressing image, uh, Vernon wants to expose and Clive is saying that no, it is someone's private matter. You should not expose it uh, to the whole public. So, Clive is against that publication, but Vernon is trying to unmask Julian's hypocrisy before everyone. So, both of them are in conflict. Before the publication, Julian's wife, Rose, holds a press conference and announces to support her husband. So, Julian's wife, kya kar rahe hai? Wo apne husband ko support kar rahe hai. Now, Clive also plans to take revenge on Vernon based on their pact earlier. Kaun sa pact hua tha? <coughs> Sorry. So, Clive and Vernon ke beech mein kya pact hua tha? Ki, if Clive is diagnosed with some horrible disease, then Vernon will help to euthanize him. So, Usi pact ke according Clive ke saath, uh, Vernon ka ek takkar chal raha hai and Clive plans to take revenge on Vernon. They travel to Amsterdam together. Now, in Amsterdam, uh, Clive has a music uh, live show, thik hai, ek, uh, matlab, live contest sound ka. So, Clive's music concert is scheduled to be held there. Now, both of them hire a Dutch doctor and arranges to have each other killed. Arranges to have each other killed. So, dono hi ek dusre ko maarne ki koshish kar rahe, plan bana rahe and finally both of them are saved by George, uh, Molly's husband. Okay, good evening Kriti, welcome. So, uh, ye baat hai about the novel Amsterdam. Okay, chalo. Next novel pe aate hai, next and, uh, yes, next and last novel of today's class, that is Atonement. Yes, this is another important novel, Atonement, published in 2001. So, Atonement ka kya plot? It is also made into an Oscar winning film. Okay. And it is a British metafiction. It's a metafiction. Okay. Fiction about fiction. So, basically, Atonement is a family saga set in post Second World War England and France. Okay. And this novel was shortlisted for Booker Prize. Shortlisted for Booker, not own. Okay. Now, Jack and Emily Tallis, they have two daughters, Cecilia and Bryony. Okay. They have two daughters, Cecilia and Bryony. Cecilia studies at University of Cambridge. And Bryony is just a 13-year-old girl who has a great talent of writing. Okay. Now, Cecilia falls in love with the son of the housekeeper, Robbie Turner. Bryony misinterprets a struggle between Cecilia and Robbie. Okay, so now uh, Cecilia has a relationship with Robbie, but Bryony is very immature. Uh, uh, during their struggle, uh, Bryony misinterprets that <coughs> Cecilia and Robbie, they are fighting with each other. Robbie writes several love letters to Cecilia and gives it into Bryony's hands to deliver it. So, this is what Bryony misinterprets. When Bryony sees Robbie and Celia, they enjoy intimacy. Bryony again misinterprets it as a physical assault on her sister. She is thinking that her sister is force, uh, forcefully assaulted by this particular man, Robbie. Now, now later, Bryony uh, uh, receives that news that her cousin Laura is raped by someone. And she accuses Robbie for that because she once sees Robbie uh, with Cecilia doing the same thing. Hai, though wo ek misinterpretation tha. But she accuses Robbie for that. And during the Second World War, Robbie is imprisoned for working as a spy or all these things. Robbie is imprisoned. Uh, 
Now, at the end of the novel, Cecilia has trained to become a nurse. Okay. Now, they are physically separated. Cecilia and Robbie, they are physically separated. Robbie is greatly injured during the war also and also he is imprisoned. Bryony also takes training as a nurse later. She falls in love with a soldier, Luke, who dies in war. Her lover dies in war. Laura finally marries her rapist, Paul Marshall. Okay, so different character ka different life story par gaya hai. Next, uh, Bryony writes the last section of the novel in the form of a diary entry. So metafiction hai. ठीक है तो नॉवेल अबाउट अ नॉवेल और फिक्शन अबाउट अ फिक्शन गुड इवनिंग सुमन वेलकम तो इसमें क्या है कि लास्ट सेक्शन ऑफ द नॉवेल इज रिटन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ डायरी शी हैज नाउ बिकम अ सक्सेसफुल नॉवेलिस्ट एंड डायग्नोस्ड विद वस्क्युलर डिमेंशिया ओके नाउ दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वस्क्युलर डिमेंशिया ये सेम डिजीज ठीक है हमने पहला नॉवेल में भी देखा सो शी हैज नाउ बिकम सक्सेसफुल नॉवेलिस्ट एंड डायग्नोस्ड विद फर्स्कुलर डिमेंशिया फाइनली रॉबी डाइज एंड सिसिलिया इज किल्ड ड्यूरिंग अ बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट सिसिलिया इज किल्ड ड्यूरिंग अ बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट एंड दैट इज हाउ द नॉवेल इट Okay, so that is about today's class. These are all the major novels of Ian McEwan. Though he is less discussed, uh, he is very important among the postmodern novelist. Okay, so read all these novels, uh, the summaries of all these novels in detail, and also remember the minute information. So that is the end of today's class. Thank you all for joining. This is the link of my Telegram channel. Those of you who have not joined yet, please join to get notification of all important classes. and these are the timings of the classes so don't forget to join me live and tomorrow at 8:30 pm we will talk about william golding william golding will be tomorrow's topic we have already discussed lord of the flies in detail but we will discuss the other novels of william golding uh, in the next class acha nazrin is saying repeat once the names of all works okay so we have discussed atonement मैं एक बार फिर से बता रही हूँ वर्क के नाम को वी हैव डिस्कस्ड एटोनमेंट देन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड एम्स्टरडम वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द इनोसेंट देन द चाइल्ड इन टाइम देन द कम्फर्ट ऑफ स्ट्रेंजर्स एंड द फर्स्ट नॉवेल वी हैव डिस्कस्ड दैट इज द सीमेंट गार्डन ओके सो दिस आर द मेजर वर्क ऑफ आयन मैक वन मेजर नॉवेल्स ऑफ आयन मैक वन ओके so please read uh, from your own side also so thank you everyone uh, we will meet again in our next class that is on tomorrow at 8:30 pm so bye bye good night see you all tomorrow at 8:30 pm